It's time for the short wait. Hang on. Wait, wait, wait a minute. This, this is the wrong stream. Hang on. Hang on. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How's it going? Dishnet34 here. Welcoming you to tonight's episode, a special episode of This Week in Perfect Team. Episode number 182. Oh, man. How's everybody doing today? How is everybody doing today? Hopefully, you're all having a great Friday. Hopefully, those of you in America who celebrate Thanksgiving yesterday, hopefully, you all had a fantastic time with that yesterday. I know I did. I made my famous green bean casserole for my family's dinner, and my God, it was good. So hopefully, hopefully, you know, you had a great time as well at your Thanksgiving dinner if you did celebrate. And for those of you who did not celebrate, hopefully you had a great Thursday. Once again, this was rescheduled kind of due to American Thanksgiving being yesterday. And this is going to be taking the place of the showdown stream tonight. And I will let you know already, I'm already out in the second round. So there you go. There, there, there's, your, there's, there's the showdown stream for you today. <laughs> oh, man. So, so. Hopefully, hopefully y'all are ready for tonight's content. We have a content set of one team wonders tonight. So these are going to be players that, you know, only played for one team in their career. And that's going to be pretty cool. Will there be a call your shot tonight? No. No, there will not be a call your shot for Twipped tonight. So let's go ahead and get started with tonight. We start with a look at the Perfect League standings. Yes. Take a look at the Perfect League standings. These are as of 8.30 p.m. this evening. I forgot to change the date on it again. Yay me. We look at the AC East first, and we have the Las Vegas Stackle Cakes in first place by just a slim half-game margin this week over the Phoenix Sunbirds. Very competitive division, this one right here. Las Vegas Stackle Cakes are exactly at... 500. Interesting, interesting stuff. Then we got the Phoenix Sunbirds in second. You got the Underground Turtle Bears two and a half games back. Cube Star Factory two and a half games back as well. So very, very interesting division going on over there in the AC East. In the AC Central, we have the McNoosh Brigade in first place right now with a 67 and 60 record. Just two and a half games up on the Tulsa Goldies in that division right now. So it's going to be an interesting division to keep tabs on. Speaking of interesting divisions, we have another one over in the AC West division. The Joe Creedy fandom and the Cheeto Cheetahs are tied for first place right now with identical 68 and 59 records. Oh my goodness. And both of those teams, only a half game ahead of the USA 1776ers. Ooh, boy, that, that is a very close division. Heck, Merseyside and Sufferables are only three games back. The San Angelo Warbirds are only four games back. Everyone above 500 in that division right now. Crazy stuff going on there. It'll be interesting to see who comes out of that division for the playoffs. And in the AC Seaver division, we have the PGH Beaches with a 79 and 49 record. The best record in Perfect League right now, a whopping 12 games up on the Puyallup Vikings today. So very, very, some very interesting divisions over in the American Conference. Let's take a look at the National Conference. We have the Edinburgh Diamond Devils in first place right now with a 73 and 56 record. Four games up on the Fogtown Stars who are at 68 and 59. Both teams are currently on a little bit of a losing streak though. So we'll see if they can turn that tide around in the nc central division we have the manchester worker bees in first place over there five games up on the glendale golden grizzlies with a record of 72 and 54 They're on a two-game winning streak coming into this uh this past sim so interesting stuff there in the nc west you have the yukon silvers in first place right now with a 68 and 59 record 65 and 62 are the false hustle the team that the Silvers are three games up on right now, but the Silvers have been on a bit of a hot streak right now. They are they have won five in a row, the longest winning streak 
in Perfect League as of 8.30 tonight. And then over in the NC Maddox, this is a very, very solid division right here. The Castroville Mashers in first place by just a half game on the Sleepy Hollow Horsemen. 75-52 and 52 to a 75-53 and 53 record. My goodness, there's a lot of good teams in this division this season. The Gonzaga Bulldogs are in third with 71 and 57 record. The Philadelphia Cross Foxes, they're exactly at 500 with a 64 and 64 record. And the Yui Gaioka Lieas, they're just below 500. Just below 500 at 63 and 64. So some very, very interesting division races so far in Perfect League. Should be fun to see who gets to go to the playoffs and which teams are going to be going to the Perfect League World Series. Find that out on Sunday night here on the Out of the Park Developments Twitch channel. All right, let's get to some cards tonight, shall we? Let's get to some cards tonight. And we start with our limited edition cards for the evening. And we start out, we haven't done this on stream in a while. We have a 100 copy limited edition card for y'all to start off with. And we have 73 overall, Tommy Agee from the Chicago White Sox from his 1966 technically rookie season. Hit 273, 326, 447 with 22 homers, 86 RBI during this season. Was a 1966 rookie of the year on this date in 1966. 72 BABIP, 61 power, 60 avoid K, 76 contact, 61 gap, and 51 I. A little bit better against lefties than he is against righties. Some pretty decent defense out there in center field as well. 95 range, 63 error, 59 arms. So some good range out there in center field. Should be tracking down some fly balls right there. Speed stealing and base running, not bad. 92 speed, 83 stealing, and 91 on the base running some decent bunt for hit as well with a 72 rating as well but yeah tommy agee this was after four partial seasons he had to start his career in the big leagues and he finally finally broke through in the 1966 season winning rookie of the year he was an all-star that year he won the gold glove award he actually finished eighth in american league mvp that year as well and led the 66 White Sox with 6.4 wins above replacement. So this guy could do it all for the 1966 Chicago White Sox. Had 44 stolen bases as well, a 127 OPS plus. So very good hitter that year for the Sox. So there you go. Tommy Agee, 100 copy, limited edition card in Perfect Team 23. Yeah, 6.4 war as a rookie. That's not bad. That is not bad at all. All right, so there's a 100 copy LE for Tommy AJ. Let's get to some 25 copy LEs for you all tonight. And you know what? Let's stick with the White Sox. Let's stick with the White Sox. And we have 98 overall right-handed starting pitcher Ted Lyons from the 1927 White Sox. 71 stuff, 99 movement, and 102 control. Ooh, boy, this is a solid, solid card right here. Uh, 72 stuff, 97 movement, 101 control against lefties to 70 stuff, 100 movement, and 103 control against righties. So, tiny bit of reverse splits when it comes to stuff rating, uh, but... Um, Kind of normal splits when it comes to movement and control. But it's not by much. It is not by much. Curveball, change up, circle change, and knuckle curve combo on Ted Lyons here. 109 stamina and a 37 on the hold runners. Now, 1927, a solid, solid season for Ted Lyons. Probably one of his best seasons of his career. 22-14 and 14 record with a 2-8 Four ERA, 71 strikeouts and 307 and two-thirds innings pitched. This guy, I mean, this is 1927 when pitchers were pitching complete games every other day. And a 299 FIP on the year. So very solid pitcher, very consistent pitcher. He was third in American League MVP voting. He led MLB in complete games, led the American League in innings pitched, 
And this is his highest career war season at 7.3 baseball reference reward. Baseball reference war right there. Yeah, interesting K rate versus stuff rate. A little bit. A little bit. But uh, there you go. Not not a bad Ted Lyons card right here. Good, great movement, great control. Should be a solid addition for whoever gets them. So there you go. Ted Lyons 25 copy limited edition card from the 1927 Chicago White Sox in perfect team 23. Is that a major award leg lamp in the emblem? As much as we are into the holiday season right here, unfortunately it is not, but I see where you're coming from on that. It does look a tiny bit like that. Oh gracious. Let's keep on going. We got one more 25 copy limited edition card for you here tonight. And we have, ooh, this could be a fun one right here. 100 overall Don Sutton from the 1980 LA Dodgers. 108 stuff, 104 movement, 93 control with, I believe those are re kind of reverse splits right here. 109 stuff against lefties, 103 movement, and 93 control against lefties. Versus righties, 106 stuff, 105 movement, and 92 control. Who no! Fastball, slider, curveball, screwball, and changeup combo right here. 94 stamina, but ooh, that whole runner though. That whole runner up there. Just a 12. So a mm, little bit, little bit uh, interesting there. But Don Sutton sneakily might have been. Might have been the best pitcher on that 1980 Dodger staff. And there were a lot of great Dodgers on that 1980 pitching staff. Let me let me just take a look, see real quick here. Just to just to refresh my memory here. I mean, you had Jerry Royce who had 18 wins. You had Bob Welch with 14. Burt Hooten had 14 wins as well. Very solid pitching staff this year. But Don Sutton led the MLB in ERA that year with the 220 ERA. Went 13 and 5. Had a .989 whip, which also led Major League Baseball right there. Uh, strikeout rate. Kind of decent for the time. 5.4 strikeouts per nine. Two walks per nine. Uh, he was fourth on the 1980 Dodgers and wins. But this was the year, but also in his career, he set the then team record for wins. After, I, be after I, I, I believe after this 1980 season. I'm not 100% sure on that. But it was when he left the Dodgers that he uh, set the team record at that point. So there you go. Don Sutton. Very, very, very interesting pitcher right here. I mean, great stuff, great movement, pretty decent control. Should be a fun pitcher right here. And he is in. Perfect team. 23. All right, so there's your limited edition cards for the night. Let's get to the content at hand, the moment you've all been waiting for. We have one team wonders, the packable set of players who played for just one team in their career and we have some very interesting names for y'all tonight so let's go ahead and get things started let's go we start off let's start off a uh, kind of a little bit farther back in baseball history not too far back but pretty far back and we head to the washington senators of the 20s and 30s for our first card tonight, it is 87 overall, Ossie Bluegie. I, be I believe it's Bluegie. I'm not 100% sure on the pronunciation, but it's Ossie Bluegie from the th from the Washington Nationals third baseman card right here. 72 Babbitt, 34 power, 82 avoid K, 75 contact, 80 gap power, and 76 on the eye. Very much better against left-handed pitching than he is against right-handed pitching. 90i, 96 avoid K, 73 Babbitt right there. Not bad, not bad. But the calling card for Aussie Bluegie is his defense. 89 range, 78 error, 106 arm, and 68 on the turn double play. Can play third, he can play short. He can also play second base. So that's a very interesting infield combo right there. A little bit of utility in the infield with this guy. 
61 speed, 75 stealing, and 68 on the base running. He can bunt as well. 98 sack bunt and a 100 bunt for hit. Defense, defense, defense was his calling card in his career. Wasn't really too much of a hitter. Hit 272, 352, 356 in 18 seasons. 18 seasons with the Washington Senators. 43 homers, 848 RBI. He was a 1935 All-Star Game selection and was the last surviving member of the Senators' 1924 World Series team. So pretty cool stuff right there for Ossie right here. Really good defense right here. Good utility. Can kind of hit against lefties a little bit as well as a gold card. Pretty cool stuff right there. So there you go. Ossie Belugi from the Washington Senators in Perfect Team 23. All right. For our next card, you know what? Let, let's stay in the nation's capital and go toward a more modern selection. For our next card. And we have for y'all 91 overall third baseman Ryan Zimmerman from the Washington Nationals. 74 BABIP, 75 power, 69 avoid K, 86 contact, 83 gap power, and 73 I. Look at the V left splits right here. 79 BABIP, 86 power, 78 avoid K, 97 contact, 97 gap, and 80 on the eye some pretty decent defense over here for ryan zimmerman he wasn't that bad of a defender back in his early years had to switch over to first base toward the end of his career but it's pretty solid right here 81 range 64 error 98 arm and 62 on the turn double play first base and third base eligible as well speed at 24 stealing of 71 and base running of 47 don't ask this guy to bunt either. Four bunt and a one on the bunt for hit. But Ryan Zimmerman, a career Washington National. Like, he was literally the Nationals' first ever draft pick as the Washington Nationals. And is the first Nationals player with his number retired by the team. Pretty cool stuff right there. 277, 341, 475 in his very much... I don't, I don't know if I want to say underrated, but very solid career. Uh, 284 homers, 1,061 RBI. He was a two-time All-Star, won a gold glove in 2009, was a two-time Silver Slugger. Overlooked, yeah, yeah, overlooked is probably a better adjective for Ryan Zimmerman. I mean, he was solid for those national teams when they were good when they sucked <laughs> and boy they sucked often but uh but ryan zimmerman very good very good player right here for those nationals teams and he is in perfect team 23 all right let's go ahead and stay on the east coast for our next card and you know what let's go back in the old way back machine and go way way back way back to the to the uh, 1910s let's let's go to the 1910s maybe a little bit of the 1920s here you know some of those new york giants teams that had some very good players on them and this is one of them right here we have 92 overall peak right fielder ross youngs from the new york giants 81 babbitt 57 power, 88 avoid K, 91 contact, 97 gap power, and 98 on the eye. This is a solid hitter right here, if I do say so myself. A little bit better against righties than he is against lefties. 82 Babbitt, 58 power, 89 avoid K, 93 contact, 100 gap, and 100 eye against right-handed pitching. Um, pretty decent defense in right field. 80 range, 80 error, 85 arm, so... He yeah, has a little bit of an arm on him. Uh, 70 speed, 87 stealing, and 79 on the base running. Pretty good bunter as well. 92 sack bunt and 91 on the bunt for hit. Now, Ross Youngs, all things considered, had a little bit of a shorter career with the New York Giants, but he had nine, maybe 10 solid seasons, I think. I want to say that's, yeah, I think that's 10 solid seasons for the New York Giants. Hit 322, 399, 
441 with 42 homers in his career, 592 RBI, hit 300 in all but one of his seasons in the big leagues. That is how consistent he was at the plate. Uh, he made it into the Hall of Fame in 1972 via the Veterans Committee. There are some people who um, who kind of, you know, accused the Hall of Fame of cronyism because the Veterans Committee that year consisted of a lot of Ross Young's former teammates. Yeah, so there's a little debate on whether or not Ross Young should really be a Hall of Famer. But you know what? He had a solid, solid 10-year career for the Giants. Um, and unfortunately, I believe... Yeah, his last MLB appearance was in August of 1926. However, he unfortunately passed away in 1927 at the age of 30 of Bright's disease, which that is very, very unfortunate. I mean, he passed like one year after his playing career ended, which is sad as heck, but man... When, when, when he was playing, he was pretty darn good right there. So there you go. Russ Youngs from the New York Giants in Perfect Team 23. All right, next up. Next up, let's go to, um, let's go to a kind of a fun, let, let's go to a fun player right here. Uh, one that I believe our stream affiliate friend to Sweegee might be interested in given one of his theme teams um is based on guys with his first name and ladies and gentlemen we have 94 overall bob lemon from cleveland peak card 90 stuff 95 movement and 79 control a lot better against righties than he is against lefties with 96 stuff, 95 movement, and 80 control. Slider, curveball, sinker combo. Ground ball guy as well with 97 stamina. 43 on the whole runner. 93 to 95 on the velocity. Plus, he's not a bad hitter as well for a pitcher. 43 contact, 54 power, 32 eye, and 29 on the sack bunt. Now, Bob Lemon, a very very interesting career in the big leagues and I, I forget if we've had a bob lemon card shown off on stream before but he had a career 207 and 128 record in what how how many years let's see 1941 15 years 15 seasons for cleveland 207 and 128 record, 3.23 ERA, 188 complete games in his career with a 119 ERA. He was a seven-time All-Star, and during World War II, this was this was the story on him. He originally was in the big leagues in 41 and 42, mainly as a utility player. But after the war, um. Pretty much a lot of his war buddies who also played baseball kind of convinced manager Lou Boudreaux, hey, this guy has a heck of an arm. This guy can be a pitcher. And so he kind of became a pitcher and the rest is history. He had a little bit of a shaky start, but he quickly became probably, he, he became a stalwart in those Cleveland rotations of the 40s and the 50s. So this guy, pretty darn good. He made it into the Hall of Fame in 1976. A well-deserved Hall of Fame selection there. Bob Lemon from Cleveland in Perfect Team 23. All right, next up. Next up, let's go to the wonderful, wonderful city of Boston for our next card right here. And we go to uh, kind of a keystone position on the infield. We go to second base for this one. We have 95 overall peak Bobby Dorr from the Boston Red Sox. 72 BABIP, 75 power, 86 avoid K, 90 contact, 80 gap power, and 85 on the eye. Oh boy, this is, a, this is an interesting card right here. 
a little bit better against lefties in some categories, but pretty decent against righties as well. 72 BABIP, 68 power, 96 avoid K, 90 contact, 89 gap, and 88 I against southpaws. Some pretty decent defense over at second base, 79 range, 95 error, 49 arm, and 83 on the turn double play. Speed stealing and base running, not exactly the best in the world. 42 speed, 59 stealing, 45 base running. Uh, some pretty good sack bunt though. 94 bunt and 93 on the bunt for hit. Why are his legs twisted up? You know, that's a that's a darn good question. Maybe he did get fooled by a curveball there and was just kind of swinging out of his shoes a little bit because that, that's an awkward stance there a little bit. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but you know what? This is a solid card right here. This is a solid card right here over at second base. Should be fun. Uh, from 1937 to 1951, so about, oh, man, a lot of seasons with the Red Sox. 288, 362, 461 with 223 career home runs, 1,247 RBI. He was a nine-time All-Star, hit 303 times, had 100 RBIs or more six times, set Red Sox team records in a lot of categories, and made it to the Hall of Fame in 1986. So very interesting card right here. Bobby Dorr from the Boston Red Sox in Perfect Team 23. All right, next up, next up, you know, I was seeing some speculation in the chat at the beginning. I mean, I mean, there's some speculation on who's going to be in this set. And you know what? I think one of, I think a couple of names that I, there, there's been a couple of names I really have loved seeing, and this is one of them right here. This is one of them. I think someone got correct, I do believe. We have a pitcher for you next. Yeah, we're going back to the pitcher's mound here, and we're sticking in the AL East here. For our next card, we have legendary Baltimore Orioles starting pitcher, 97 overall, Jim Palmer. 92 stuff, 91 movement, and 89 control. Fastball slider, curveball changeup combo, 104 stamina, and 67 on the hold runner. Pretty solid splits here, all things considered. Um, 94 stuff, 91 movement, 90 control against righties. 90 stuff, 91 movement, and 89 control against lefties. So good fastball, good curveball here. Jim Palmer, a very fantastic, a fantastic pitcher in his career from 1965 all the way up to 1984. Almost played for 20 years with the Baltimore Orioles. 268 wins to 152 losses in his career. 2.86 ERA, a 125 ERA+. Plus. 30-time Cy Young Award winner, six-time All-Star Game participant, won the ERA title twice with the Baltimore Orioles. Fun fact, he never allowed a grand slam in his career. Never did. You can look it up. Never did. Never did. Jim Palmer, Hall of Famer in the 1990 season, but man, oh man, Jim Palmer, Fun card right here, 93-95 on the velocity. Tiny bit of a hitter as well. I mean, 29 contact, I mean, it's not going to do much for you, honestly. But there you go, Jim Palmer from the Baltimore Orioles in perfect team 23. All right, next up, hey, you know what? We've been kind of going on a run of AL East lately. So you know what? Let, let's stick in the AL East. Let's stick in the AL least a little bit, at least for one more card here. Oh, man. Probably one of the better first basemen. Maybe, I don't know if you want to say one of the best first basemen to never win a World Series. This is a fun one right here. And honestly, this has been one of my favorite, favorite player cards in previous versions of Perfect Team just for the batting profile alone. We have for you, 98 overall, first baseman, Don Mattingly from the New York Yankees. 87 BABIP, 79 power, 95 avoid K, 108 contact, 97 gap power, and 78 
on the eye. Very, very solid splits right here. Tiny bit better against righties in some categories than lefties, but very serviceable against both sides of the plate. 87 Babbitt, 80 Power, 99 Avoid K, 109 Contact, 96 Gap, and 79 I against righties. Very, very solid first base defense with 80 range, 87 error, 85 arm, and 85 on the turn double play. Oh, man. Don Mattingly. Man, I tell you. I tell you. Man, if this guy was a lefty and this wasn't a lefty and was in, like, probably some of the earlier versions before, you know, just they stopped letting you train lefty throwers at positions other than first base, this guy would be fun, especially just for the defense alone right here. But a very solid career for Don Manley. 307, 358, 471 on his slash line. His career between 1982 and 1995. 222 homers, 1,099 RBI. He was a 1985 most valuable player. Six-time All-Star, nine-time gold glove winner. Defense, um, pretty good. And he is the only Yankee with his number retired without winning a World Series for the New York Yankees. Very interesting fact right there. So there you go. Don Mattingly, first baseman from the New York Yankees in Perfect Team 23. All right, next up, you know what? I need to go to my team right here, the Detroit Tigers for our next card. And oh, man. Oh, man, this guy, this guy, a solid, solid relief pitcher in some of the, on some of those, you know, championship teams, those good teams of the 70s, the 1968 World Series team. This guy right here, we have 98 overall, John Hiller from the Detroit Tigers. 107 stuff, 88 movement, and 91 control. Fastball, curveball, changeup combo here. Little bit of reverse splits here in terms of stuff and control. 107 stuff against righties to 104 stuff against lefties. Movement is more favorable to lefties than righties. 89 movement against lefties, 87 movement against righties. Control, 90 against lefties and 91 against righties. Fastball, curveball, changeup combo, like we said. 24 stamina and 28 on the hold, runners 95 to 97 miles an hour has a fly ball tendency as well. But man, oh man, in his career, he was very solid for the Detroit Tigers from 1965 to 1980. He pitched in 545 games. That is the Tigers' record for games pitched in a career. Pretty cool stuff there. 43 games started mainly earlier on in his career, 125 saves and a 283. ERA. He was a 1974 All-Star. Top 10 in Cy Young Award voting two times. And he made the Canadian Hall of Fame. The Canadian, I believe, Sports Hall of Fame? Or is it just baseball? Hang on a minute. I need to double check. Yep, the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame in 1985. Hasn't gotten into the Baseball Hall of Fame yet. Just saying. He's pretty good. But there you go. John Hiller, very fun card right here from the Detroit Tigers. Peak card in Perfect Team 23. Does the Canadian Hall of Fame qualify for Cooperstown College? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. So there you go. Let's keep on keeping on. And you know what? We had a couple of White Sox already tonight. What's one more? And this one is a pretty solid one. If I do say so myself, we go to 99 overall right-handed starting pitcher, Red Faber from the Chicago White Sox. 92 stuff, 102 movement, and 90 control. Oh boy, some very interesting splits here. 96 stuff against lefties, 101 movement against lefties, and 89 control against lefties versus righties. Pretty interesting here. 89 stuff, 102 movement, and 91 control. 
Fastball, curveball, screwball combo. 101 stamina, 73 on the hold. Runners, ground ball guy, 92 to 94 on the velocity. Red Faber, a very solid career in the big leagues. He was the last legal spitballer in the American League. Had 254 and 213 career record between 1914 and 1933. 315 ERA and a 119 ERA plus. Won the ERA title twice with the White Sox. Led MLBs in complete games in 1921 and 1922. So a very solid career for Red Faber. Fun, fun fact, after, after his baseball career, he uh, founded a charitable organization that assisted former baseball players who had run into financial or physical problems. Later, he actually worked on a uh, Cook County, Illinois highway surveying team until he was 80 years old. So he had a, he had a pretty interesting life outside of baseball as well. So there you go. Red Faber. This is an interesting card right here. Could be pretty cool. He is in. Perfect team. 23. Yeah, so he was kind of a spitball grandfather. Yep, he kind of was. He kind of was. All right, let's get you some hundos. Let's get you some hundos here. And we start off with maybe one of, maybe one of the best catchers of our modern time. A release is pretty much up there as one of the best catchers of our modern time. Oh my goodness, this guy, very solid at his peak. Ladies and gentlemen, over in San Francisco, we have 100 overall peak Buster Posey from the San Francisco Giants. 83 Babbitt, 75 power, 88 avoid K, 100 contact, 86 gap power, and 71 on the eye. But look at those V left stats right here. 88 Babbitt, 80 power, 97 avoid K, 109 contact, 92 gap, and 79 on the eye. And look at his catcher defense here. 99 ability and 86 on the catcher arm. 17 speed, 76 stealing, and 46 on the base running. Has a little bit of first base eligibility as well. 35 range, 37 error, 31 arm, and 35 on the turn double play. But man, oh man, Buster Posey. What a career for Buster Posey. Retired just last season. From 2009 to 2021, he hit 302, 372, 460. 158 career homers, not exactly a power hitter in his career, but had a few homers here and there. 729 RBI. He was the 2020, the 2012 NL MVP, 2010 Rookie of the Year, seven-time All-Star, led San Francisco to three World Series titles, and he was the second, only the second player ever to win Rookie of the Year, MVP, and three World Series titles. The other one being Pete Rose. Very cool stuff right there. Buster Posey, solid catcher card right here from the San Francisco Giants in. Perfect team, 23. All right, next up. Next up, let's go out to center field for our next card of the evening. And we go to the AL Central for this one right here. Probably one of the greatest Minnesota Twins of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, 100 overall peak Kirby Puckett from the Minnesota Twins. 98 Babbitt, 77 power, 90 avoid K, 114 contacts, 99 gap power, and 49 on the eye. But look at those V left statistics right here. 99 Babbitt. 84 power, 92 avoid K, 118 contact, 104 gap, and 57 on the eye. Can play both center field and right field for your team. 96 range, 99 error, and 95 on the arm. 66 speed, 85 stealing, 86 base running. Solid hitting card right here. Some solid defense as well. 
And Curry Puckett had a really, really great career for those 80s and 90s Twins seasons. Um, 318, 360, 477. He did not walk much in his career. He did not walk much in his career. 207 home runs, 1,085 RBI in his career. 10-time All-Star, 6-time Gold Glover. His 318 career average at the time of his retirement was the highest by a right-handed hitter in the American League since Joe DiMaggio. That is some rare company right there. And he made it into the Hall of Fame in 2001. Very much better against lefties than righties in his career. Pretty decent base stealer as well with this card. Can play two very good positions, center field and right field. But there you go. Kirby Puckett from the Minnesota Twins in Perfect Team 23. All right, one more card for our one team wonders this evening. I know, I know it's 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 almost done, guys. It's almost done. But you know what? I think we might have saved the best for last potentially. This guy right here, probably one of the biggest power hitters of the 20s, the 30s, and the 40s. I mean, we're talking like big big power right here. And ladies and gentlemen, we have for you 100 overall peak Melot from the New York Giants. 79 Babbitt, 121 power, 97 avoid K, 118 contact, 86 gap power, 96 on the eye. This guy is a power hitter extraordinaire. 124 power against righties, 121 contact against righties, 99 avoid K against righties, 88 gap and 98 I against righties, and kind of serviceable against lefties too. He's got 112 power, 111 contact, 87 I, 93 avoid K. This is pretty cool right here. Third base, center field, and right field eligible. 75 range, 77 infield error. 84 infield arm, 52 on the turnover play, and somehow his arm in the outfield got cut off. Let me double check that really quick, really quickly here. Can we get polo grounds for him? Eh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, that would be pretty cool if I do say so myself. All right, Melot, his arm is... Let me just uh, do a thing real quick. Let me take a looky look here. It is 88. 88 on the arm. But man, oh man. So uh, 34 speed, 74 stealing, 84 base running, 89 on the sack bunt, 81 on the bunt for hit. 304 average, 414 on base, 533 slugging in Mel Ott's career. 511 home runs, 1,860 RBI. This guy made it to the big leagues at the age of 17. 17. This guy was practically signed from a lumberjack company. I am not even kidding here. So basically, his early life, he had a job at a lumber company in... In Patterson, Louisiana, where he became a sensation on the company baseball team. Now, Henry Williams, the company owner, was particularly impressed with Ott. And while visiting New York, he suggested that Giants manager John McGraw give him a tryout. This is according to Wikipedia. Ott was skeptical at first, so Williams bought Ott a train ticket to New York. Quickly impressed observers with his hitting, especially McGraw, who predicted that he would be one of the greatest left-handed hitters the National League has ever seen. And honestly, in a roundabout sort of way, he was kind of correct. So there you go, Mel Ott. Mel Ott from the New York Giants in Perfect Team 23. Oh man, some fun, fun cards for y'all tonight. Hmm. You know, I don't think there's been enough. I really don't. 
But wait, there's more! We have some bonus content for you all tonight! Some almost one team wonders. That's right, we have more packable cards for you of players who just missed out on playing for just one team in their career. Oh boy. Oh boy. So let's go ahead. We have four cards. Some four more cards for you right here. And we start off. You know what? Let's go back. Let's go back to those Baltimore Orioles teams of the 60s, the 70s, and 80s. And you know what? One of the most solid players on their infield, on that left side of the infield, along with Brooks Robinson, was this guy right here, Mark Belanger from the Baltimore Orioles. Orioles 96 overall now you're not gonna get a lot of bat with this guy but what you're gonna get is some defense 99 range 100 error 97 arm and 98 on the turn double play this guy did not hit homers in his career this guy his on base percentage only got to 300 ooh, 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 ooh. 228, 300, 280 on his slash line in his career between 1965 and 1982. 20 home runs and 389 RBI in his career. Was an eight-time gold glover. Played all but all of his seasons for Baltimore, but his last season in 1982. Only hit above 250 twice in his career. That's how bad he was at the plate. But his 23.5 defensive wins above replacement between 73 and 78. That was up there was a lot of elite defenders in that day. Let's see. He got uh, 72 Babbitt, 37 power, 93 avoid K, 80 contact, 71 gap, and 75 on the eye. Pretty good bunter, though. 102 sack bunt, 100 on the bunt for hit, 58 speed, 80 stealing, and 69 on the base running. So there you go, Mark Belanger from the Baltimore Orioles in Perfect Team 23. All right, next up, hey, let's go to Boston. And let's go to Boston's outfield for this one. We have 96 overall, Dwight Evans. Dwight Evans from the Boston Red Sox, 59 BABIP, 82 power, 82 avoid K, 81 contacts. 103 gap power and 99 on the eye. This guy, big gap, big eye right here. This is, that's pretty much going to be his calling card right here. 106 gap against lefties, 101 eye against lefties. Pretty serviceable contact of OK in power as well. And pretty solid gap in eye against righties as well. 87 range, 89 out. Yeah, error in 85 arm in the outfield can play right field and a little bit of first base as well 25 speed 70 stealing and 48 on the base running a great career for Dwight Evans in Boston 272 370 470 on the slash line in his career between 1972 and 1991 385 career homers 1384 RBI Three-time All-Star, eight-time Gold Glover, two-time All-Star. Has the second most career games played for the Boston Red Sox. Played for Baltimore Orioles in 1991, his final season in the big leagues. So there you go. Dwight Evans from the Boston Red Sox in Perfect Team 23. All right, there we go. Let's move on. We got two more, and they're both 100 overall cards. Let's go to the New York Mets for our next card of the evening that just missed out on being a one-team wonder. And that next card is 100 overall, Cleon Jones from the New York Mets. 96 Babbitt, 65 power, 86 avoid K, 106 contact, 89 gap power, and 76 on the eye. A lot better against lefties than he is against righties. 100 BABIP, 71 power, 89 avoid K, 113 contact, 89 gap, and 79 on the eye. Can play all three outfield positions, left, center, and right. 84 range, 83 error, and 71 on the 
arm. 59 speed, 78 stealing, and 68 on the base running. Not exactly a bunter, really. 37 bunt and a 45 on the bunt for hit. Cleon Jones, kind of a kind of a decent career for the New York Mets, mainly in those, you know, early 60s. Um, played all but one year for the New York Mets. He was part of that 1969 Miracle Mets team that won the World Series, caught the final out of the 69 World Series, hit 281, 339, 404 in his career with 93 home runs, 524 RBI, and he was an all-star in that 1969 season. So there you go, Cleon Jones from the New York Mets in perfect team 23. All right, one more card for y'all tonight. And you know what? This one, pretty darn good. We go to the pitcher's mound for our final card of the evening. Kind of bounced around in the 1965 season with a couple teams, but for the most part, he only played for one team in his career. Just missed out on being a one-team wonder. But this one, pretty darn good right here. 100 overall left-handed starter Warren Spahn. Warren Spahn from the Milwaukee Braves. 103 stuff, 100 movement, 102 control. 104 stuff against lefties, 100 movement against lefties, 102 control against lefties. Versus righties, 103 stuff, 100 movement, 102 control. Fastball, slider, curveball, screwball, changeup, and sinker combo right here. 103 stamina, 76 on the hold runner, 92, 94 on the velocity. This is a solid, solid lefty card right here. And man, oh man, Warren Spahn in his career, probably one of the best lefties of his time. Definitely one of the, definitely the best lefty of his time. Between 1942 and 1965, had 363 wins, 245 losses, 309 ERA, a 119 ERA plus, 17-time All-Star, 1957 Cy Young Award winner. Led the NL in ERA three times. And he holds the all-time left-handed pitching wins record with 363 wins. Holy moly. And he also has an award named after him. Yes, indeed, the Warren Spahn Award, which goes to the best left-handed pitcher in Major League Baseball. Um, that hasn't been announced yet, but last year it was Julio Urias who won it, Hyunjin Rio has won it, Patrick Corbin won it in 2019, Blake Snell in 2018, Clayton Kershaw has won it four times, Randy Johnson has won it four times. Pretty cool stuff right there, and this is a pretty cool card right here. Warren Spahn, who played in 1965 for the Mets and the Giants, he was a Hall of Famer in 1973 so there you go Warren Spahn from the Milwaukee Braves it perfect team 23 so there you go folks there is our content for the evening your one team and almost one team wonders Ozzy Bloogie, Ryan Zimmerman, Ross Youngs, Bob Lemon, Bobby Dorr, Dwight Evans, Mark Belanger, Don Manningly, John Hiller, Red Faber, Buster Posey, Cleon Jones, Kirby Puckett, Mel Ott, Warren Spahn, and Jim Palmer. Oh man, some fun, fun stuff tonight. Oh man, fun, fun stuff here. All right, let's go on to the tournament standings from last week. Take a look and see who finished in the top 10 last week. In the daily traditional tournaments, we had Red Eclipse in first place with 226 points with the Palatine Plutos. Dr. Sucks in second place with the Balking Dead with 210 points. Beham Bells in the Bellingham Bells in third with 184 points. Isadafo, Galoy, KC86, Dragglefred, Emerald Relativity, JDA, and RDT24 rounding out the top 10. 
For the weekly traditional tournaments, we have Mad Matt from the Durham Los Toros in first place with 114 points. Jake P316 in the chat. Golden Rumps in second with 106 points. C. Steinhardt and the baseball team in third with 100 points. Then it's FJC1, Doc B15, Tech 15, Meta Durden, KC86, BKN Mets fan, and Caleb 1722 rounding out the top 10 in the weekly traditional tournament. In the perfect draft realm, we have Macho Man and the Macho Man Savages in first place last week with the daily perfect draft tournaments with 77 points. Jeet Six in the Brooklyn Atlantics in second with 71 points. Third place was Harwick Don in the Bay Area Legacies with 65 points. There's Mike JR03, Gabagool X, Holophant, Admiral Relativity, Keferis, Uber Reese, and Matt DJ1985 rounding out the top 10. And for the weekly perfect draft tournament, Sean Heights and the Sleezu Angels in first place with 54 points. The Clark 7th or Clark VII, probably, probably 7 more than likely. And the Dallas Skyline Sluggers in second place with 51 points. Connolly 206 and the South Orange Village Villagers in third with 41 points. That's Curly Karkovis, Spike Man 62, Hip and Knee Doc, Zergian, Seafried 3, Cyrus Bell, and Defoe rounding out the top 10. All right, now let's take a look at how the standings are shaping out right now. As of 2.30 p.m. today in our tourney top 10s. In the daily traditional tournaments, it's Warhawk in first place right now with the Las Vegas White Tigers with 122 points. Hondo Lane and the USA 1776ers are in second with 119 points. Dr. Sox and the Walking Dead in third with 117 points. Red Eclipse, Holophants, Galoy, C. Steinhardt 2, Tragglefred, Ace Rutherford, and RDT24 rounding out the top 10. In the weekly traditional tournament, it's Scabro number one in first place with 82 points. Ah, I forgot to get the team name in there, doggone it. Mad Matt and Durham Los Toros in second place with 67 points. Khan and the Vlad News Bears in third with 59 points. Twins fans, RDT24, T-Truck, C. Steinhardt, D. Horner MB, KC86, and Zen Lunatic rounding out the top 10. And in the perfect draft tournaments, ah, I forgot to get the asterisks off of there. That was, uh, that was for reference for me for when I was building these standings. It's nothing indicating anything malicious or anything like that. Daily perfect draft tournaments, Mr. Audit and the Mediocres in first place with 61 points. Mount McLeod in second place with the Kane County Cougars with 49 points. Leo Remus and the Kane County Cougars in third, well, Leo Remus in third place with 47 points. Noman, the Cohasset captains in fourth with 46 points. Jake, 14. Issa Davo, D Horner MB, 23. DSLFC, Emerald Blade, 81. And Daryl UCLA rounding out the top 10. And in the weekly perfect draft tournaments, it's DPL1 in the Bard Owls in first place with 36 points. Fabtron, 7 in the Edmonton Whales in second with 32. Spike Man, 62 in the Troy Trojans in third with 31. Then it's Twins fan, Greasy Frankfurt. Plastic T2, Jake P316, Majungasaurus, Jasper Baby, and Warhawk 3 rounding out our top 10. So there you go. Thank you so much for tuning in to this special edition of This Week in Perfect Team on a Friday night. Thank you all so much. Um, thank you all so much for uh, tuning in tonight. Hopefully you've had a great night so far, and I will see you back here on Sunday night. Sunday night for the Perfect League World Series. Have a great night, everybody. Dishnet34, signing out. Have a great night, everybody.